Hello, Q kids! It's so great to see you guys here. Are you guys still in the same place as you were last week? Because it looks like I'm in a little bit of a different spot this week. But either way, Jesus is still with us either place we're at. So I hope that you guys are ready to have some fun with me and Jesus. And parents, as always, if you are there with your kids, we hope that you will stick around because after all, you are the number one faith support for your children and you will be a great uh, partner in helping your kids know Jesus through this service as well. So I hope you guys have the three things ready. If you don't, uh, I will let you know now that we are looking for your Bible, your journal, and something to write or draw with. If you don't have those three things with you, go ahead and grab those things now. We'll, we'll give you some time. In the meantime, while everyone's going to grab their Bible, journal, and something to write or draw with, we're going to do a little bit of an activity together. So we've done a number of things in the past, but this time I want to play a little bit of pretend. We're going to pretend that we are on a roller coaster together. Have you guys ever been on a roller coaster? We're gonna do a lot of different kind of moves. We're gonna pretend that we're gonna go left, we're gonna go right, we're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. I want you to follow along with me. So everyone, get in their roller coaster. <clears throat> All right, you guys in your roller coaster? All right, let's sit down. We gotta bring down the strap. <laughs> Did your strap make the same sound? All right, so we're in our strap, we're ready to go. And first we're gonna go forward. <laughs> And then we're all going together, we're going to go up. So everyone go up with me. Up, 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 up. We're coming to the top of the roller coaster. All right, we're leveling out. Everybody put their hands up and we're going to go down. Ah! Everybody now to the left. Ah! Everybody to the right. Ah! We're going back up again. Whoa! We're going down. Whoa! We're spinning around. Wow! Spinning around the other way. Wow! All right. We made it. We all went in our roller coasters together. Did you guys have fun? Should we do it again? Uh, maybe another time. I think everybody is now back from getting their Bible, their journal, and something to write or draw with. So we're going to continue on with our service today. Now, you remember this series we talked about this last week, is called The God Who Leads. Now in this series, we're talking about different stories where God is leading his people in certain disagreements that they are having. We learned about disagreements that Peter had with Paul, but this week we we're learning about a different kind of a thing that God was trying to lead his people in, but it's all under the same theme that is covered by our big picture question. That's right, our big picture question from the last few weeks, it's the same as before, maybe you've memorized it. The question is, why does God want us to obey him? Now maybe you've been around and you have been saying this with us the last few times, so maybe you've memorized it. Try to see, we're gonna put up the answer on the screen right now and try to see if you can say it with me without looking. So close your eyes and see if you can repeat it with us. All right, why does God want us to obey him? Obedience is our response to God's love for us. All right, so what kind of obedience are we going to learn about today? Well, in this story, uh, God asks us through the Apostle John to love one another. And it's coming from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. Now, in this story, we learn about how God wants us to love one another. And the love that we are to show one another is not just a feeling, because usually we think of love as a feeling. We feel love for one another. But in this story, we're going to learn about how God asks us to show a love that's about doing something. It's not just feeling, it's doing. And it's not just a love we do for our family. It's a love that we do for our church family as well. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that in our Bible story today. So sit back and relax and let's watch the Bible story together. As one of Jesus' closest friends, 
the Apostle John had lived alongside Jesus. He had witnessed Jesus' life and teachings himself. Now, some 50 years after Jesus had returned to heaven, John was an older man. He knew who Jesus really was, and he wrote a letter to help believers understand that Jesus was and is the Son of God. John showed that God is love. If believers truly love God, they will also love one another, and that love must be shown in what believers say and do. John said that people who are God's children live differently than people who are not God's children. Believers do what is right, and they love one another. <gasps> this is not a new message. Jesus told us to love one another too. John wrote that others will know we are Christians because we show love to one another. John told about Cain and Abel. Why did Cain kill Abel? Cain killed his brother because he did what was evil and his brother did what was good. Cain hated Abel. John explained that people who do not love others are controlled by the power of death. God has set every believer free from the power of death. He has loved us and has given us life so we can love one another. We know what love is because Jesus showed us. He laid down his life for us. Because of Jesus' power, we can and should love like that too. When we have something that our brother needs, we should give it to him. If someone has enough to help but turns away and does nothing, does that person really know God's love? John said that we must not just talk about loving others. We must love them by our actions and by telling them the truth. John wrote a letter to teach believers in the church about the importance of showing love. Love is more than feelings or words. It is an action. Jesus showed God's love for us when he died on the cross to rescue people from sin. So now that we have all watched the Bible story together, let us now read the Bible story together in our Bibles. So that again is coming from the book of 1 John chapter 3 verses 10 to 18. And now we hope that this is something you can do together as a family. If you happen to be there on your own, it's okay, you can read it on your own, but we hope that you will come together as a family and read this together from your Bibles. Now, parents, if you have preschoolers with you, we usually give you a, a story to read from the Jesus Storybook Bible to help them understand better. Now, just like with last week, this specific story isn't in the Jesus Storybook Bible, but we invite you to consider reading a story with a similar theme about loving one another. And so in pages 286 to 288, you will find the story, The Servant King. And we're only asking you to read the first three uh, pages of it because it's the one, it's the part that relates to our theme today. So feel free to read that story to your preschoolers if you wish, or also read from your Bibles from 1 John, and we'll, uh, we'll catch everyone back together in a few minutes.
Welcome back. So now that you have read the Bible story together, let us talk about what the main point of this story is, just so that we remember. See, the main point of this story is that John wrote that we are to show people we are Christians by our love. You see, the thing we learned in the story is that Jesus loved us first. And we know how much Jesus loved us because even though he didn't need to, he still died for us and he rose again to just show how much he loves us. And since everyone who believes in Jesus is now a child of God, that means that we are all brothers and sisters in the same family. See, if Jesus loves your brother and sister that much, we should also probably love them in the same way. Jesus wants all of us in the family of God to love one another. So because he has first loved us, let us show love to one another. So this is a great thing to remember while we are memorizing our memory verse. Now our memory verse is the same as last week and so if you have memorized it for this week, see if you can remember it by closing your eyes and repeating it as uh, we put up on the screen. So we're going to put up on the screen and the memory verse is this. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 You see how in that, even in that verse, it says how much Jesus loves us. And so let us continue to memorize that verse because it's going to be a great help to remember that Jesus loves us in times when we don't feel loved. Sometimes we don't feel loved and it's good to remember that Jesus always loves us. Now, let us continue to remember this also through our journal time. Now, journal time, you've got your journal already through from the beginning, and we invite you to take that out, and you can either write something or draw something. Now, remember, Jesus is so awesome that he can speak to us and we can speak to him through his spirit by writing and drawing things. So this is a time for us to be with Jesus, not with our brothers and sisters or our families who are with us. So this is going to be a quiet time, a time for us to do this alone with Jesus. And so here's what I want us to do for our journaling time. If you would like to draw something, I invite you to draw you doing something loving for someone else in the church. Now, similarly, if you'd like to write something, I would like you to write, what are some ways you can show love to other people in the church? Now, this one might be a little bit more of a complicated question. So parents, I invite you to take a little bit of time with, your, with everyone there and maybe brainstorm some ideas. There's so many ways you can show love to one another. You can pray for other people. You can help them do certain things together. You can show love by giving them a hug. You can ask them how their day is doing. You can uh, maybe bring them groceries. There's a lot of different ways you can show. So maybe brainstorm together with your uh, kids how, what they might uh, what they, what, what they might do in their journal so that they're not completely lost perhaps in their, in their writing or drawing. So take a few minutes silently. Parents, if you have preschoolers, we do continue to invite you to do it vocally with them because they may not know how to do this silently. So uh, take a few minutes for that and we'll come back together.
All right, I hope you guys had a great time spending time with Jesus in your journals, writing or drawing, whatever you did. And now it's time to finish our service together in prayer. So would you pray with me? Would you fold your hands and close your eyes and say these words in your head with me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us first and showing your love by dying for us and rising again. Help us to show love to other people in our families and in our church families. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you know what time it is now. It's time for circle time. So parents, if you, uh, have, you will have received in your email, if you've connected with us before, a Zoom link to Circle Time. This is an opportunity for us to come together uh, and share highs and lows, see each other's wonderful faces, pray for one another, and, uh, and just check in for the week. So uh, go ahead and at this time, click that Zoom link, find your way into the Zoom call, and uh, let's have some time together. Uh, if, if you are new with us, we do encourage you to reach out to us through qkids.org slash or queensway.org slash qkids. And there you can sign up to receive uh, emails about the Zoom link and future links. Have a blessed week and we'll see each other again next week.